I've decided to do a regular book review and the reason for that quite simple I love books I've always been as a kid I was an avid reader uh, I love books themselves I could spend hours in a bookshop I'm a bit of a geek in that regard um, but over the last couple of years and you'll probably be able to know why over the last couple of years my reading has somewhat slipped and I haven't been doing quite so much of it but over the last month or so I've completely fallen in love with reading again and I, I really want to read as much as possible and I've been devouring books over the last few months and my dogs wake me up very early in the morning so I've been using early morning hours to do some reading. So I'm going to tell you about, tell you regularly about books that I've been reading and today I want to talk about the follow-up to the absolutely horrifying but brilliant Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Now I read that book some time ago and it's the only book, and it's going to sound a little bit crazy, because it is a little bit crazy. It's the only book or movie or any anything else of, of any cultural artifact that I've ever, ever felt this way about. When I finished reading The Handmaid's Tale, I was so horrified I didn't want it in my house. I really, really didn't. It was horrific. And she's such Margaret Atwood. She's such a brilliant writer that she brings you there. She makes you feel like it's happening to you. Uh, the, she she uh, drums up all these incredible emotions in you. She's an absolutely outstanding writer. So The Handmaid's Tale I read some years ago. The book I want to talk about today is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, which is this. The Testaments, obviously by Margaret Atwood. It's every bit as brilliant as The Handmaid's Tale, every bit as horrifying as The Handmaid's Tale. And any woman particularly reading it uh, will get absolute chills from this. What it's about, if you're not familiar with it, it's about the, uh, it's, a, it's a futuristic world in which the United States has become essentially an Old Testament theocracy. And in such a society, as you can probably imagine, women wouldn't exactly fare well. And in her portrayal of this, women don't fare well. It is truly horrific. But something that strikes me, and struck me as I was reading The Handmaid's Tale, and again as I was reading this, is that I, I wonder, I wonder, does Margaret Atwood realise that she's describing an Islamic state? Does she realise that for millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of women in the world today, this isn't fiction, it's real, it's what they live with. You're describing Margaret Atwood, you're describing Sharia law, or at least many aspects of Sharia law. Stoning to death for not being a virgin, a woman's word being worth half of a man's, uh, these, these absolute, absolute horrors of where rape victims are killed, uh, you, you, uh, one example she gave was a woman having to seek permission from her 12-year-old nephew. There's an actual example of that that I know well from a Muslim country. You're describing Sharia law, Margaret Atwood. But here's the part that really, really gets me. In the cover, in the sleeve of the book, and as someone who's written a book myself, I have, you, you write these things yourself. It's like when you go to give a talk at an event and they want, uh, and they have a little booklet of bios of speakers. You write those bios yourself. And you also write the sleeve of the book yourself. So I can't say for certain, uh, but the chances are that the author wrote the sleeve of this book herself. And in it, it refers to the presidency of Donald Trump. And that's why, for example, the mo the TV remake of the uh, the TV portrayal of The Handmaid's Tale has been so successful. Uh, and s this is why she wrote this book, because Donald Trump is in the White House. And the implication is very, very clear that she sees Donald Trump as the big threat to turning the United States into the kind of country where women are treated as second class, as worse than second class citizens. How can someone, how can someone so intelligent and so brilliant as to write these fantastic books be so incredibly blind on this issue? It is not Donald Trump that threatens to, to, to bring this horror to America. It's Islam that is bringing this horror 
to America. This is what you're describing is Sharia law. It's not fiction, it's fact. The uh, Muslim groups all over the United States are clamoring for Sharia law, asking for the same disgusting councils that we have in the UK, just so they can treat Muslim women in the way that you're describing in your book, Margaret Atwood. And what's even more shocking is that so-called civil liberties and feminist groups are on the side of the Sharia law advocates. Feminists and civil liberties are apparently now pro-Sharia. It's insane. The whole thing, you've got this so spectacularly wrong. If anyone is going to ensure that women remain free, independent citizens in the United States, it's Donald Trump. He is the one who's pointing out the horrors of Sharia. He is the one trying to keep it out of America. He is the one trying to make sure that people will still be free in the next generation and the one after that. It's it's staggering to me. It's the world turned upside down. Margaret Atwood, you're an intelligent, brilliant woman. Try to understand this simple point. Donald Trump is not the problem. Donald Trump is the solution. If you want women to be free in America, then you better support freedom in America. That is not the Democrats who bow down to Saudi Arabia. The exactly, exactly, Saudi Arabia is exactly what you are describing with, with repulsion in your book. And yet it was Hillary Clinton and the Democrats who bowed to them at every opportunity, who have turned parts of America into little mini caliphates. It's the Democrats who threaten the freedom of women in America, not Donald Trump.